Hello there. Um, I made this card today, very, very simple. Um, and I just wanted to, to try and show you how the way you present your images, whatever it is, can make a big impact. I mean, this is a really, really simple two bits of um, uh, cutting. I didn't actually die cut these. I cut them on my silhouette portrait and a tiny bit of sentiment. Now, if I had just put them onto a flat card, let me just get them. Here's my sheet where I've been cutting them out. So one, two. And to do these, I grabbed a bit of free clip art of um, a jigsaw piece from the internet. I dropped it into my silhouette software and there's a process there whereby you can trace the edge of the shape and then cut it, which is what I did. Um, so I copied the first one I made to, to make a second one, which is exactly the same. And then I, I messed about with the sizes. You can see here the first time I did them, I wasn't really thinking what I was doing and, and they're really kind of a bit too small but obviously when you're using um, images that are computer generated rather than dies you can change the size at will which is a great advantage okay so I've got my two pieces and what I did I put them together like this how they fit and then I just simply stamped these little hearts um, they're very old. I don't know how long I've had them, but they're very old from Stampin' Up. It's called Confetti and there's all little bits and they're really useful uh, little stamps. But loads of companies do similar sort of things. So, you know, you, if you can't get this one, which you probably won't be able to because it's so old, it doesn't matter. There's plenty around. OK, so put my stamp onto a little acrylic block. I thought I'd try black this time, see what black looks like. So here we go, just ink up my stamp. There we go, I think that'll do. Right, put this out of the way so I don't get mucky fingers. Just give it a quick wipe away. Clean that up. I got told off from messy desk. Anyway, there we go. I'm afraid I'm a very messy person. So there's my two bits of jigsaw. Now what I could have done, there's this piece at the front here is the exact size of my card base, which is that. So I could have gone straight onto my card base, but I printed out the sentiment. I, I will add a link at the at the bottom to show how I do computer sentiments. And then I could have just put those on there like that. Now, if you look at that and you look at that, I think you will agree that this one has got much more life than that one. It's much more dynamic than that one. No, than that one. You know what I mean. So, simplest of things, just to focus the eye and make something a bit more special. It's a bit like a chef taking care with the way he presents food on a plate. He doesn't just whop it on and say, there you go, eat it. Presenting it in a very attractive way makes it much more appealable. Is that a word? Perhaps it is. Anyway, this is what I'm going to do. To start with, when I cut out with um, my electronic cutting machine, I don't like this raw edge, which is why I love die cutting, actually. I don't like this cut edge. It, it looks harsh. So what I do is this. I use an embossing tool and I just go around the edge of the shape, wherever it is, and it just softens that edge, makes it look more like a die cut than an electronic cut from a machine. Okay, there's that one. Now this one. I'll just come in a bit. I don't know if you can see. What do I have to do? This, this is the 
this is as big as I can go. So, just around the edge of the shape, just beveling it a little bit, smoothing down that harsh cut edge. And to me, that makes a huge difference. I mean, some people might think it's been a bit fussy, but it's what I like to do. Okay, so there's my two pieces cut. Now, let me just come out again, otherwise... What am I doing? There we go. That's better. Right. Those are my two pieces. Now, I need to remember which way round I did it. Was it there? No. Was it there? No, it doesn't actually matter, but let's have a look, see. That's the one, is it? No. <laughs> How did I do this? That's not it. That's not it. That's not. Must go somewhere. Where'd it go? Might have been like that. No, it can't because that's not right there. Oh, does it matter? I think we're going to have to waste time. Right, here we go. So that's that. I have beveled the edges, made those look a little bit better. Now, I want to make this frame. Just by making a small amount means that I can take the focus of the, the, the viewer into the image itself. So I have got here two press cut nesting dies. And what I love about these is the fact that the increments between the sizes is so small that you can get this lovely narrow edge. Um, so I'm going to use the smaller of the two for this one. So I'm going to centre my um, sentiment and... I don't know how I did it. I have, I've got no idea. So it'll look, I think, somewhere like that. Okay, so a little bit of low tack tape just to secure that where I want it, just so that it doesn't move around. More on the outside than on the inside. This doesn't normally damage the card, but uh, just, you know, to be prudent is to put more across the outside than on the inside, on the actual bit that's going to be on the card. Now, I'm going to be cutting this on my um, spell binders, but often with large shapes like this, I use my um, switch, my Sizzix switch. And that one, the pressure is incredible. It is really, really strong. And the top plate gets really quite marked by the top edges of the, the dies. Then, of course, after that, that dent in the top plate is transferred onto the next paper or card that I'm going to cut. So what I often do is this. I use a piece of vellum. Not so important with this one because the pressure is not so great. So I'm going to pop that in slightly, slightly on an angle because if you, if you come head on to a, a parallel to the roller piece of uh, die, it's going to make a crunch, it's going to make a, a crack when you try and cut it. If you can just go one bit a bit further forward than the other, it does help. So put this on and you can still see through that your die is in place, it hasn't moved. So on with the top plate and cut out. So the, the piece of vellum is twofold in its in its purpose actually because it a stops the transfer of any impressions from the top plate going onto the card and also protects this plate from the die itself okay let's take this off there's one i'll put that out of the way and i'm going to do one more a slightly larger one and i did have a piece of card somewhere here it is Here's a piece of card. So let's 
so that's the smaller one is there the larger one is here I can't really change this uh, on an angle because um, you might be able to hear the difference actually um, I'll put I'll put my piece of vellum on so I don't normally bother with this machine because it's not so bad but particularly if you've got a switch where the pressure is so great it does help now hear the crack that's because the die is there we go it's because the die is absolutely parallel to the roller this edge so there's my two pieces okay have I cut the right one I get carried away I have it's a bit of luck isn't it right there we go now I could just put those I've helped a little bit by beveling the edges of this by adding adding a frame but this one is still a bit more dynamic the reason is double-sided tape so that's what I'm going to do now so the first two layers I'm going to just stick together this is my ATG gun I've had it for years I probably could do with replacing but it's still going well saves so much time right rest this on my pointy fingers while I get the position right and drop there we go now to put this onto the card I'm going to mount that on a bit of foam tape and foam tape um, just makes that little bit of relief gives a little shadow which just it's, it's quite subliminal and it takes the eye to the image in the center oh, just a minute thought that was a bit long right how we're we doing just about I'm not taking a great deal of care with this one's too long but that doesn't matter okay now double-sided um, foam tape is very very sticky it grabs the surface that you're putting it onto practically as soon as it touches it and so just give me a little bit of um, maneuverability in case I don't get it absolutely right the first time I always go over the double-sided ta foam tape with a little glue stick it doesn't make the uh, adhesion any less but it does give me a bit of manoeuvrability to make sure I've got this in the right place. But once more, what I do is make sure I've got the card the right way up. Rest it onto my pointy fingers while I align it. If you're not sure about getting it straight, you could always use a T ruler to make sure that you, you are one of these things. Put it on. You could always put it on to make sure that you're getting your... Um, dies or whatever you're putting on straight now my two little jigsaw pieces and I'm going to use a bit of double-sided foam tape on these two so it's a bit long get the idea I'm not going to waste time doing that now so I mean look at them straight away look at this one look at that one the difference is phenomenal just the slightest thing of adding foam tape I will try and remember to, um, and add links to this this is by sticks to anything and it's narrow I love the narrow stuff so there you go a very quick card showing you just a, a few tips on how to make something a little bit more special. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it.